The scary thing about them, they don't need power. Lights, heat, that's the advantage. That's what makes them stronger. This movie is about survival in many ways. The apes are trying to survive, and they are. They're thriving in the wilderness. Humans, after rebounding, need to get this going again. They can't live in darkness like the apes can. The city used to run off nuclear power, but that ran out years ago, so we've been using diesel generators and gasifiers. But if we can just get this, this dam working, then we have a shot at restoring limited power. So specifically, it's just turning the power back on. And that is a challenge, ultimately, that's going to cross paths with the apes. So, lights. Yes. The lights. Now uh, he starts to rise up, so just look at his waist, let's say. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then he starts to come towards you. So he probably rises up further, and you start to back away. We should follow him. There. All on, and then, then you should turn away from us. You know, I will, but I'm just going to set my eye on. So that's there. That's him coming up, looking at me out a bit. And that's him coming towards me. The thing about Jason Clark is he's such a wonderful actor and is known really for having done, you know, a lot of wonderful dramas like Zero Dark Thirty in which he was just brilliant. One of the things that was exciting to me about casting someone in that role like that was to, in the same way that we're trying to give an interior life to the apes that feels very real and grounded, we wanted the counterpoints, the human characters, to be just as realistic and, and for you to be drawn into the mystery of what's going on behind his eyes. And I found that Jason completely had that quality. That moment, when they come out, we need another pace which is even slower, right? Because okay, any, yeah. any sudden move near them is going to try, but, but it's good. Okay, good. Yeah? Yeah, good. Yeah, see what you do with your voice, it really helps. Oh, absolutely. Okay, we're going to go again. Four, you know, Matt, he's a real, you know, he's a character-driven, drama-driven director, I think. And, you know, we discussed a lot of, you know, the world that Dawn exists in, you know, and, and where it picks up from from the last one and, and what makes this one, you know, worth doing and, and interesting and fun and, you know, and challenging. Do not come back. One of the challenges for the human actors is that much of what they did, they essentially would explore with, let's say, Andy or Toby, and they'd play these scenes together. Do not come back. And at a certain point, after something maybe really special had happened, I had to ask the ape actors to go, and then Jason would have to play the scene to no one. And so, for example, there's a scene where he is dragged up and thrown to his knees before Caesar in the courtyard. And it's a very sort of brutal experience. Please, please, please. And Jason did it, I don't know, I had him do it maybe a hundred times with ape actors. And then I had to have him do it with nobody. Okay, okay, okay. And he was throwing himself down and he was playing to no one. He really pushed himself and physically pushed himself. He was required to do a lot of heavy lifting on this. And, you know, he's knocked about and, uh, you know, dragged around and beaten up by all manner of apes. Thank you, Thank you Gordy. Excellent. Well done, Gordy. Right. Pushing the actors around again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do up there? What are you going to say? I'll tell him the truth. Hope I catch him in a good mood. He has got a real breadth and scope and ability to play the leader when he needs to play it, but also to play the softness of the character. This is your home. I don't want to take it away from you. But if you can let us, if you allow, allow us to do our work here, of us. Just a few. One of the great things about Koba, who Toby Kebbell plays, is that he has every reason to mistrust humans. And actually, in Rise, you've seen Koba. Koba, I am well. Koba was the lab chimp who was tortured mercilessly by the humans, and so you can understand that he would have no place in his life for humans. So as we come into our story, we see that Koba has essentially started to become a completely different kind of ape. He's part of this family, and there's a real brotherhood between Caesar and Koba. And this closeness comes through, first of all, what Caesar's done for them, but also what it is to be a family together. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
But then, when the humans show up, it starts to bring back the ghosts of Koba's past. Caesar love humans more than apes. Koba reacts very violently to the whole notion of human beings ever coming anywhere near the ape colony. <laughs> Koba is very much of the mind that, that humans should be eradicated, they should be taken away and got rid of. Caesar! Dead! Humans! Kill Caesar! So I just played it, and that's raged, what... raged, 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 but I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, the only exactly. one I came up with was... Caesar's dead! Oh, right, there's a question, right. But it, it was totally wrong, so yeah, I killed it straight away. Yeah, can't be the guy, can't be that. You but know. I couldn't oh, find a melancholy. Yeah. Matt Reeves is um, it's like an old-fashioned theatre director, you know? Jeez, he yeah. does a lot of rehearsal yeah. and does a lot of takes. I'm very used to sort of doing takes as kind of rehearsals and, and getting that performance out. It's kind of like going, how could this happen? He's dead, he's dead! Do you get what I mean I like that? Totally and that, yeah. that, those words could literally be like... It's like a whale. It's like you could even say no words. You go, no! Okay. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is that it's, it's such a nice thing to have someone who trusts you inherently. You know, right from the minute you start talking, he kind of stops and pays full attention. You don't have to catch his interest. So it's very okay. flattering and, and very nice to work with someone like that. This is what happened. Like, I'm giving you the news. This is terrible, right? And then he comes, he did this. You know what I mean? Apes must attack human city! Fight back! One of the cool things about Toby is he, just as Andy becomes so immersed in the character, um, Toby studied what bonobo chimps do and where they, how they kind of express themselves. And he came in expressing himself in this very primitive, animalistic way that translated so beautifully to the ape movement. I met Toby at, uh, in fact, he came to our studios uh, in London, the Imaginarium, to audition for the role of uh, Cobra. And it was very, very clear when he came in that he was the right person for it. I mean, Dylan Clark had known Toby and, and Matt had been very keen on Toby, but he came into our performance capture studio and, uh, and we played out the, the scene, quite a key scene, where Cobra's standing up to Caesar and saying, look at what humans have done to me. Human. What? Human. It was a really powerful moment. Human work! And it was very clear that he was the man for the job. You know, he has got this fantastic ability to switch between being very innocent and looking into his eyes. You can see how vulnerable that character is. And then, of course, when Cobra turns, he, he can be terrifying. <laughs> That's what this whole movie's about. Yep. Um, <laughs> I am the only girl, though, on this adventure. And we were just shooting a scene, and Matt came up and said, um, can you not say man in this scene? Because <laughs> I was going, come on, man. And I was like, uh, I have been hanging out with the guys too much. Come on. <laughs> Carrie I had worked with on Felicity, and she's one of my favorite actors. I, I just love her. And I just felt like, Again, for me, what I was interested in, just as we wanted to look to ape performers who could bring out the soul of those characters, I wanted human actors who had depth and soul, that you would relate to them and empathize with them, that you could feel their plight. I didn't know you had a daughter. There were meant to be no villains in the story. Carrie is just someone who I just think you always connect to and you always are drawn into. Now I have you and your dad. And being able to work with her, it's so funny because we did so many, many hours of work together that was all about two people in a room. And to go up there into the woods and be shooting this enormous sort of film with apes all around us and all of that kind of stuff that it was supposed to be, it was such a strange experience. And yet the part of it that I knew would be the part that was exciting was how much she would ground everything in reality. I think I see it, it's down here. There was this book that, a couple of years ago that I had brought to Matt to talk about possibly doing something. And there was a character in it, a war photographer. And we talked a lot about that character. And Matt said, you know, remember that character we were talking about? 
and about how she was and she was you know tough and sort of surviving in this world and because that's kind of how I see her and so we talked about that character a lot. We need to operate, I don't have anything. But more than that, just amidst this adventure and action and I think Matt just keeps saying that let's remember about what the human truth of this moment is. We're two weeks away from running out of fuel, maybe three tops. I know. And once that happens, I won't be able to go out there with a bullhorn and calm everybody down. One of the other major figures in the human community is uh, Gary Oldman's character, Dreyfus. We need that power to get the radio transmitter working. It's our only chance of reaching the outside world. Who's a very pragmatic, hardcore, survivalist who is going to make sure that the human beings survive at any cost. Absolutely clear-minded and as black and white in his opinions about apes and how they've murdered humanity as Cobra is about humans doing that to apes. So they sort of parallel each other. Keep them off the walls! Keep them off the walls! I was a huge fan of Planet of the Apes and the first one when it came out. I remember it vividly, like it was yesterday, and what my sort of response to it was. So with this particular project, it was the script, but it was the sort of history and all the baggage around it too that it sort of comes with. Did you find it? We need to talk. And then I met Matt Reeves, and I liked him very much, and thought he had an interesting take on it, putting, I think, more focus on the human element. We're almost out of fuel, which means no more power. Gary Oldman is, he's just amazing. And, and it was so exciting to get to work with him. I recognize the trust you all placed in me. We, we, we've been through hell together. It was really cool. He was doing this huge speech. And every time he nailed it, but it would slowly build up to something that was just like, Wow, that was amazing. And it was boiling hot, and he was up in this little, you know, balcony level, so it was even hotter up there. So I have a lot of respect for him and, and everyone that worked that day. It was very hot and muggy, and it smelled like fish. There was real fish there. Uh, the props put real fish there. It was horrible. Now, it wasn't until we settled here. I'm gonna f my throat up. <laughs> it wasn't until we settled here. You want me to. I don't want you to. I don't want to. This wanna, feels like it works, and I don't want you to blow your voice. That wanna, feels right, and I don't want you to blow your voice. Yeah, but that. This feels like you need it to take control, doesn't it? And it, it works for you to hold. It. Yeah, it works. And one of the things we talked about was that the most compelling reason for him to want to be in this film was he connected to the story. He thought that the story was such a moving story. This idea of the humanity for lack of a better term, in the apes and in the humans, and trying to find some way to work this out, that he found that very moving. Trust. And so he really wanted to be involved because of how much he connected to the story. And what that brought to Dreyfus was, it goes beyond what words can say, because he gave such a emotionally committed performance, and he brought so much of himself. <laughs> about any of that. I care about him. He saw things that no kid should see, and I'm not letting us go back to that. I just remember when we were talking, Matt said it's a father and son story of just trying to survive. And um, it's a lot about trust and, and love. And he really, really cares about me, and especially in this type of world and what's happening. The trust and love and all of that is just bumped up, you know a million steps, so um, it's just a lot of compassion and uh, survival. Cody has some really, really cool scenes, I think, where he and Maurice have this sort of through line where it becomes, you know, Maurice sees early on that Cody's character has brought up with him some different reading material, and one of them is this graphic novel, Black Hole, that he's obsessed with. And Maurice is staring at him like, what is that? What are you reading? But what you see expressed in what Cody does with Karen Carnival, who plays Maurice, is that you see them relating in a way that feels 
really mysterious and very, very real. <laughs> and I think it's one of those things, I think, where people watching the movie are going to say, no, wait a minute, that, yeah. that orangutan must have been real. Like, the way in which they were relating. And at the same time, how do they keep that ape from attacking the boy and all of that stuff? And it all comes from what those two actors did together. And it becomes this connection between the two of them where you start to see between the two of them what the possibility for a world of apes and humans who coexist could be. Hanging out. I don't know if they told you like how bad I wanted this part. If anyone, okay, well, <laughs> I, I, um, so I, well, I worked with Andy as we were two humans in a movie many years ago called 13 Going on 30. So I've known him for a really long time and he was so wonderful to work with then. Such a love, so sweet. And I really like walked away from that movie just like loving him. And then I met a guy and fell in love and married him. And this man, his name is Dean Johnson, he is like obsessed with the franchise Planet of the Apes. And I decided that when they did a sequel that I would have to try to get a role in it. And I was like really wanting to be an ape. So as the ultimate wedding present to my husband, I auditioned and got cast in Cornelia. <laughs> But if I thought for a second about what I look like, I would never do it. I mean, when you're a girl and you're an actress, you're used to like having to look a certain way all the time, so you really have to let that go. But it's also helpful because when you are an ape or a chimp like I am, they don't care how they look. They're not thinking about how they look, so it's actually like another benefit. It's helpful to get in character, I think. This film resides in a real soul. Now, ongoing struggle in how we deal with ourselves and the world and our responsibilities and the joy and the, and the amazing gift that it is. But also, it's like being sick or on, you know, with that, that old saying of like, you, if you have your health, you have everything. And in terms of, if we have our planet, if we have our world, if we have our, our ability to live, we have everything. And we find ourselves in a point in this film where it might be over and we have to reach out to people that we've tried to dominate. Thank <laughs> you. 